Cassava, also known as yuca, is the major food crop in sub-Saharan Africa. Its roots can be grown in high-density plantations under a drought condition that would normally cause other crops to fail, making it a favorite for farmers. Cassava's resilience has led to the crop's widespread adoption since its introduction to Africa in the 16th century. In the East African country of Tanzania, more than 80% of its farmers are engaged in cassava production, with nationwide yields of 4.5 million metric tons annually. However, production levels are nowhere near where they could be. Currently, Tanzanian farmers are losing nearly half of their crop due to two major diseases, cassava mosaic disease and cassava brown streak disease. Cassava brown streak disease, or CBSD, causes severe rotting of cassava roots, which make them inedible. Cassava mosaic disease, known as CMD, reduces yield by destroying the leaves and reducing photosynthesis. The two diseases together can cause farmers to lose their entire cassava plantations. Zora mhogo ni mpenzi wa kulima lakini sasa mihogo ime inatusumbua namna ya ugonjwa. Matatizo yapo kwa sababu matatizo na yanakuja kwa sababu mategemeo ya mihogo ambayo tunayolima ili kusudi uvune uuze kwa sababu wakati tunauza ukivuna unauza huku unakula. Sasa namna ya kuuza inafika sehemu inashindikana kwa sababu sinaoza ina maana ndio sasa hivi tunatapata hapa tuna na watoto ina maana ndio maana tunakimbia kwenye mpunga sasa ili kusudi una tusaidia. Lakini mihogo imetutupa. Cassava viruses are spreading between farmers fields and across international borders. If left unchecked, these viruses could lead to an international cassava shortage that would affect the more than 500 million Africans who consume cassava daily, and tens of millions of farming households who depend on cassava for income generation. Currently, farmers in Tanzania are getting very low yield. We are talking of um, uh, five tons per hectare. This is mainly because of these two diseases, cassava mosaic disease and cassava uh, brown streak disease. Together, uh, loss um, in, in, in terms of yield estimated it between B, uh, two to three billion US dollars in sub-Saharan Africa. And then in, in, at the farm level, uh, these diseases have caused the food shortage and the threatening uh, food security. This is the story of how Tanzanian scientists are working with an international team of researchers from Africa and the Americas to create new varieties of cassava with resistance to viral diseases and the insect pests that spread them. The initiative is called the Next Generation Cassava Breeding Project, or NextGen. NextGen, based at Cornell University, aims to significantly increase the rate of genetic improvement in cassava breeding through the use of advanced breeding technologies like genetic markers and software prediction models that help scientists and farmers select new cassava varieties. The goal of next year in Tanzania is to accelerate the genetic gain of cassava, but also deliver improved varieties to farmers in the shortest time possible. It's important now that generating disease resistant material is done now. If that is not done, then we are likely uh, of having or experiencing uh, food insecurity, not only in Tanzania, but in Africa. Matatizo ya mihogo, unapo olima, mihogo inaoza. Yani kama sasa hivi ukiangalia, ukija kuanza kuingoa, mihogo yote chini meoza. Kwa hiyo tufanye, tufanye nini? ili kuyaepusha yu magonjwa. Mana niki ukuta umeoza, ninaimenya, nina, nina naya tupa tuwa yu ya Cassava brown street and the cassava mosaic disease are viral diseases. 
which affect cassava. Both these diseases can cause a loss of to 100 no percent. A farmer can get nothing because of the infestation of the of cassava brown strain and cassava mosaic disease. So the quality of the root is, is not there, so farmer cannot say, sell this one. Yeah. Cassava is a main part of the, of the meal in a day. In fact, in the lake region, quite a number of places, cassava is the number one staple because it's it, it utilized during the day, in the evening, like for lunch and dinner. So really, this crop has been, it is very important for, for our country. Hasala ni nimewahi kuipata kwenye mihogo yetu ya kienyeji. Hasala mihogo yote ilioza. Yeah. Ilioza kwa sababu ilikuwa na michirizi michirizi yote ilikuwa na uozo uozo tu mihogo. Kwa hiyo nilikuwa na hasala kubwa. Sikuvuna. Sikupata chochote. Yaani tatizo hili limeanza kwa miaka kwenye miaka ya tisini na kitu. Ndiyo maana hata kilimo cha mihogo wengi wakakikimbia. Hilo, hii wanaita ni, ni kutoka, kutoka gangweri wanaita gangweri hae. Sengerema. Yes, sengerema. Hii ni, ni ugonjwa tayari hapa. Mihogo hii ina ugonjwa tayari. Imeathirika. Hata mihogo waki ukitaka kutoa, umeoza. Ugonjwa. This is the typical symptoms of the cassava mosaic disease. If the plants are affected by this disease, then there is no yield or you get very little. If the infection is from early stages, then you don't get anything. The planting material, the cutting which was used, it was also infected. So the selection of the materials was not good yeah. because the infection was from the start. So when the farmers do not understand the, 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 the disease well and they go to other farm, neighboring fields picking the materials, <coughs> they take even the infected ones because of not knowing, because of lack of knowledge. So they just pick without knowing it's a disease, they go and they plant and the disease continues spreading. There are no methods of control that can cure an infected cassava plantation. The only way to eradicate the viruses is to ensure that farmers have access to virus-free cassava planting material of disease-resistant or immune varieties. Scientists hope that software prediction models can help to make cassava breeding more efficient and precise so that resistant varieties can be developed more quickly. The technique is called genomic selection. In genomic selection, plant traits like yield, disease resistance, and root quality are measured and correlated with genetic information in a statistical model. When provided with a DNA sample from a young cassava plant, the software gives a prediction of how valuable the plant's genetics might be to the goals of the local breeding program. DNA samples coming from Africa. So they send the samples in this type of tubes. So each tube contains the DNA inside. And they will send these samples to the sequencing machine. So those sequences will be generated, the sequences from each and every tube here. We are using a tool called genomic selection, which basically is uh, trying to predict the performance of the offsprings or progenies uh, from the performance of the parents. We started this as a proof of concept to discover these tools that are needed for, for breeding varieties that are better than what the farmers are growing. Right now we are at Kibaha station and in one of the screen houses. Tanzania joined Next Gen project recently. We did uh, genomic selection in collaboration with uh, Cornell University. So it is my hope that uh, 
our program here at Kibaha, we'll be able to generate varieties that are acceptable by customers. Uh, these varieties should be uh, resistant to major diseases such as cassava brown stick disease and cassava mosaic disease, but also with the high yields and uh, high dry matter content. One of the major challenges we get from farmers is inadequate access of clean uh, planting materials of improved varieties. As a program we are trying to work with farmers but the number of uh, plantlets or cuttings we, 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 we manage right now is not enough as you consider it from the demand, demand point of view. So there is high demand uh, from farmers uh, but the supply is not enough. Lima ina muko ya mfalasa na kiloba. Kutoka na mbegu be ya gari zile ambazo za kisasa ndo uwezo wa tuna na lima mbegu zile. Na lima kutoka na mbegu nyingine ya kuna ya niwezo wa kununua. Lakini utofauti mbegu hile na za tofauti na mfalasa. Mbegu nyingine yani inazaa vizuri na watejatake wapo. Changamoto zipo katika zao la muogo. Changamoto moja hapo kama nilivuweza kuonyesha, tuna matatizo ya mbegu kama hii lasta inashambuliwa sana na magonjwa. Na hivi sasa inamana imesha chukua takriba ni, ni, miya, ni miyaka mingi bado inatusumbua. Naona, haijapatiwa ufumbuzi. Naona bwana. Sasa ndani ya muogo, tuna hali ya kuitaji mbegu mbadara ya hizi tulizo zoea kwa sababu mbegu kama hii ina rasta ni mbegu moja bora sana kwa mwongo. Sasa tunataka changamoto za haraka zifanywe kupatiwa utafiti wa haraka tupatiwe mboga na ni mbegu mbadala wa hii rasta. E, ushauri wa Tore Queen na maana ni, ni msaada wetu kutusaidia kutuletea mbegu iza kisasa za kibori kusudi tuwepuke na na wagonjwa kwa sababu familia imeshao tutazikimbia sasa unapolima chakula kinaoza sasa familia tutazikimbia the big major of success of course is the variety to the farmers we have what we call farmer participatory breeding straight away farmers are going to give us a feedback on what they like within know the varieties what are the preferences so we are going to work on that in producing the, the best varieties for the farmers. So we don't want to, to work in the box alone and then produce a variety which is going to be rejected at the farm. So right away we are going to involve the farmers in the participatory evaluation of the variety so that you know, they give us feedback. In breeding research, we cooperate together. We take each variety from on station and also the same test we do in the farm. Us as extension officers and the farmers, we are able to select the good variety for our areas. Area, all the tests they are doing in the own station. So it is difficult for farmer to participate. But now, local researchers, extension officer and the farmer, all together they participate in breeding, in, in testing this variety. So why it is good for us. We have been able to, within five years, been able to beat our targets by getting varieties that are ready to be deployed in farmers' farms in Africa. Uh, currently we have nearly 20 varieties being tested in farmers' fields in Nigeria and in the next one year we will have the same in Uganda and also in Tanzania. Genomic selection works in cassava because we have been able to use it to develop varieties that are competing or even outperforming the commercial cultivars that are being grown in our, in our partner countries in Africa. We've developed tools, we have lots of publications, we have um, generated uh, molecular or genomic resources that are out there for anybody to use. What we want to do is to implement in the farmer's fields you know, what we may call realizing genetic gain. And how do we want to do this? We want to generate the varieties. With new cassava varieties nearing release, 
and a high demand for cassava planting material, there is a growing opportunity for farmers looking to start their own seed businesses. Farmers' cooperatives across Tanzania are starting their own enterprises by multiplying cassava planting material to help other farmers meet consumers' demand. Other agricultural entrepreneurs are developing their own value-added products like processed flour and cassava chips. Still, many smallholder farmers have not been able to adopt improved varieties due to scarcity and lack of information. For farmers like Rosemary Francis, access to new varieties could help improve their families' livelihoods. Aided by collaborative genomic tools, next-gen scientists hope to put disease-resistant improved varieties in the hands of smallholder farmers while strengthening the capacity of African National Agriculture Research Institutes and International Crop Improvement Centers. NextGen depends on support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the UK Department for International Development. Over the next five years, research teams from Tanzania, Uganda, Nigeria, Ghana, Cornell University, and other partners will ramp up development and testing of improved cassava varieties and release them to farmers. So if we are able to combat these diseases using uh, improved material that will be generated from this project, we expect to see crop productivity improvement. Therefore, we expect an improvement in food security and livelihood. <laughs>